Hello and welcome back to the X-Files Revisited. This is a recap of Season 1 and uh, we've got a few things to get through so we're just going to tell you that we're going to go through our bottom five episodes first and then we have some uh, readers' comments that about their favourite episodes and then we're going to finish off with our top five episodes of Season 1. So, Brian, just a brief overall, what did you think of Season 1? Um... I was actually quite surprised by how how many of the episodes didn't quite cut the mustard. To be honest, as an mm. as an X Files fan, you know, as the die hard, I think if you'd have asked me before we went into this, what's your overall feeling of season one? I'd have said really strong. Uh but coming to each of these episodes with a, a very critical eye, because like, like when I when I'm watching them for to, to prepare for for our reviews and I'm doing my notes, I you know I, I I watch each scene on its own and then I pause it and I write any notes for that scene and doing that kind of forces me to, I guess, overthink each scene uh, in some cases. Uh, but it just made me more critical, I think, and so I was surprised. But I mean, when I, when I look at my at the scores, I mean, I've got. If at any time you want to know the scores we gave for for any of the episodes, I've got them here right in front of me. But just looking at them at, at a quick glance, I'm surprised by how many twos and two point fives and 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 threes there are. You know, I I really would have thought there'd have been. A lot more fours on there, uh, but th- but there isn't. There really isn't. So that yeah, so that surprises me quite a lot. Um, I, I I'm with you. I think it's a wildly inconsistent season. Mm. Quite often, you go from a five out of five, and then go on a run on these two to three movies, uh, movies episodes, mm-hmm. where nothing particularly happens, and then bam. An absolutely knockout episode oh, yeah. again, and you're like, "Wow, this is this is a fantastic series," and then more of the same. Mm. Um, but I suppose we'll get to that with our top five and bottom five, mm. right? So, so who's going to go first on this uh, bottom five, then, Brian? Who's going to start off with their number five? Go on, I'll I'll, I'll kick it off if you like. Um, all right, so my number five. Obviously, my my number one out of these is going to be the worst. So I'm working my way up to the worst. Um, uh-huh. So my my fifth worst episode of season one, and it kind of make it pains me to say this, but conduit because it should have been you know when you're dealing with something so personal as the abduction of Mulder's sister, it should have been a lot better. Ah. Uh, mm. Now we did we did have this this central character of the week, so to speak, in this this woman whose whose daughter is abducted. I, I did feel some sympathy towards her, and I did feel like the episode was her story, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So you know, so it wasn't a total loss for me. I wouldn't say this was an appalling episode by any stretch, uh, but like my memories of it were so much better than. Than the reality of what we got, uh, so yeah, it was just disappointing. Like I say, if it, if, it, if it didn't attempt to deal with something so personal as Mulder's sister's abduction, it probably wouldn't be as disappointing. But because they because they do, and and fail, it it, it is disappointing. So yeah, that's my number five. Yeah, my my number five. <laughs> And it pains me to put this in here because this was the one episode that I really remembered before we started talking about this, <laughs> and that is Jersey Devil. Now, I say it pains me to put it in here because that is one of my favourite episodes that we've done, Brian, because I had a lot of fun mm. talking about this. Yeah. But we were tearing it apart because of how ludicrous <laughs> it was. It didn't make sense. Skid Row. It wasn't exciting. <laughs> the Skid Row still makes me giggle to this day. Um, that picture, that man. Cool? The picture that the, the champs draw. <laughs> <laughs> it sets me off oh. now, I tell you. Just... 
it's it's hilarious. It's hilarious talking about it, but all the enjoyment doesn't come from anything in the episode at all. The, the mm. episode is banal. It separates Mulder and, and Scully. It gives Mulder this divorced guy to kind of. <laughs> almost get. We get we get the, the the party of our nephew who's never mentioned ever again. <laughs> We get the crappy stinger at the end. Oh man! It's just it's just a poor, poor episode. Um, I don't know why it stuck in my head as much as it did. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Jersey Devil was my number five. Mm. Okay. <laughs> my number four is the Jersey Devil, and it pains me to put this here for all the reasons you said, which is just that it was so damn entertaining talking about it not watching it but talking about it like I I didn't when I actually watched the episode I didn't laugh about the things that we laughed about it's only when we brought our notes together and started talking about the ridiculousness of it that the humour came out of it so like you said the humour comes out of out of talking about it, so not so much the episode itself you sit down and you watch it and it's actually quite a miserable experience um yeah, the only reason this isn't higher is simply it kind of gets a bit of a free pass because of the entertainment value we we had discussing yeah. it. Um, number four in my list is Medical Man. Okay. Uh, I didn't I didn't like this episode very much. Um, this is this is the one about the the guy the preacher's son who yeah. Can, can heal people and, and and the guy he brings back is poisoning people and trying to ruin his reputation mm. I feel it's full of a, a particularly not nice characters um, doing particularly not nice things that you have the, the preacher father who is pretty much just trying to milk his son for every kind of penny he can get out of him mm. you know he, he, he preaches as a, a, a man of God mm. <laughs> From his golden palace, yeah. <laughs> Which uh, <laughs> then you have the person who's been saved for his life, you no know, hating the fact that he's been saved mm. and, and kind of fighting back against these people. Mulder and Scully, I, I don't think. Again, it brings the sister element back into the storyline, which I I'm fine with that as a story element. I just feel that they're very ham fisted with it. Again, not as bad as they were in Conduit for mm. sure, but they still kind of feel kind of beat you over the head with it. I am, um, yeah. Whenever I think of Miracle Man, it just it kind of leaves a, a a bad taste in your mouth. It's it's all these bad people doing. But even the sheriff of the town has been doing things he shouldn't have been doing. You, you know, everybody's just horrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's not one of my favorite episodes. It's, <clears> it's <throat> even one I can have fun with. So, so that's my number four, Miracle Man. Yeah, it, it was one of the episodes I toyed with putting on this list, but, yeah, in the end, it, it didn't end up on here. Uh, but my number three, a very recent episode that we reviewed, is Roland. Um, basically, th- this episode just got traced uh, big time. <laughs> 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 it's just, it's just, it got well into well and truly traced. Um yeah, if, if if you've not heard our review for that, I, I don't know I don't know what you're doing here, but if 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 you have you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh yeah, just abysmal. Re- really dull to say the least. Um with the only thing going for it is this central performance by Zelko Ivanek, which just isn't enough because he's surrounded by a story that is just woefully misjudged. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't wait for it to end, to be honest. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Um, my number three uh, is Space. <laughs> an episode that just <laughs> the most the most expensive episode from season one. Where was the money on screen? <laughs> Seriously, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, I mean, I could have knocked that uh, NASA set up out in my garage. <laughs> I really could have. It's, it's horrible. 
Um, for those for ghost. those who who are not aware, um, when me and me and Graham record these, we we can actually see each other because we do it through a video call. He's actually in his garage recording this right now, <laughs> and I can tell you that it does look more expensive than the set that they used in space. It wouldn't be hard. I, I just. I didn't like the, the sort of storyline. I didn't like the effects. <laughs> um, I mean, I think back to the episode, all I can think of is the face, um, the director going back to his house and just cracking open a bottle of vodka and downing it out of the freezer. <laughs> Mulder being upset that his hero's a tool. Um, mm. And pretty much nothing else. Just, uh, yeah. It's devoid of space. It's just space... If I could jettison an episode, this would be the one. I'm, I, I never voluntarily watch that episode ever again. No, <laughs> that's my number three space. Okay, my number two is a gender bender. Um, <laughs> oh man, the um, I I believe the. Uh, the 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 pl- the description that you used in in the iTunes uh, the, the the label thing was that the truth is not Amish. I, it's <laughs> oh man, is it not? Just yeah, I I I I found that kind of obvious attempt at looking at an Amish type culture. Uh, I, I I found that quite reprehensible, to be honest. To to to, to use the Amish in that way, G- given what I know about them, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm no expert on Amish, but um, yeah, I, I think it, it really does them a disservice. Uh, I, I find the episode to be just cheap overall. Uh, there's there's not that many great Mulder and Scully moments. There are a couple. There are a couple humorous ones, but it. it, it the comedy really does feel forced. It doesn't come out of any kind of natural chemistry that's going on like we would usually get with Mulder and Scully. It feels like the situations that are written in order to, to bring a bit of comedy out, and it it doesn't work for those reasons on the whole. Uh, the one redeeming feature of, of this episode really is Nic- Nicholas Lee, who pops up as one of the victims. Uh just a really great performance from him. He's only in the episode for a couple of minutes, but he's a shining light uh, in the in the scenes that he's in. And yeah, so if if nothing else, this episode introduced him as an actor to the X Files, and and thankfully, well, I, I, I'm thankful that he did because he comes back in season two in a big way as a different character. Uh, so yeah, that's my number two gender bender. Okay, my number two is Conduit. Mm. Um, have you ever seen Being John Malkovich? Oh, yeah, I didn't like that film. Do you know that part where Malkovich goes through the door and ends up seeing all these people who just start going, Malkovich, Malkovich, mm, Malkovich, yeah. Malkovich? Yeah. Yes. I feel that that is, is a, a very a close kin to this episode, only with everybody going, Mulder, sister, sister, <laughs> sister, sister. sister. Mm. Sister. Yeah. Sister. Hey, Mulder, you're in somebody else's house. Why don't you stroke that picture of a small <laughs> child? <laughs> oh, I was, was going to get there. I was, I was, I was going to bring that up. Uh, but yeah. Uh. It's just, this one, and when I think back to it, I wish they'd called the episode Sister. It just feels as if they are literally beating the drum way too hard for something that was done way better in mm. episode one. Yeah. Um. Just mentioning that that story about the sister, I just, I I can't I can't stand it because of that. Mm. It, it doesn't treat us as a, an intelligent audience. It feels that it has to consistently mention the sister yeah. several times, and I can't think of anything else about that mm. episode other than just Mulder's sister. The, there was that and, pointless thing as well with the the. the, the um, the little kid who'd come up with these ones and zeros pictures, yeah. and they had to go up the stairs to see that it was a woman's face, as if as if you couldn't have seen that just looking at it from the couch. Um, but I, I remember the ending and how actually 
it kind of made all that, all those elements a bit null and void because the kid goes out there to look for his sister because you feel like he's been called out there by the aliens but he doesn't find her he's not the one who finds her they they find her by accident they kind of stumble on yeah. her and it, it, yeah it, the whole thing was just a bit of a mess really Okay, Brian, so what's your worst episode of season one? Okay, my number one, and you've already mentioned it, is space. I could not have been more bored whilst watching an episode of The X-Files. This may be the single most boring episode of this show ever. Like, you know, like you said, this, this, this had the highest budget of any episode in this season, any episode, you know, you, you put Earl and Meyer flask alongside this, it didn't cost as much to make. Yeah. You put ice or squeeze or any of those episodes up against this, it didn't cost as much to make. And I cannot, for the life of me, see where any of that money has gone. Uh, because it is just boring. Really unlikable characters. Mulder be himself becomes someone I don't really like that much, the way he pines over his hero. And it's, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a slog to get through. It's a, it's a real slog. And I... Before we watched it for our review, I remember thinking, I, I, I'm not looking forward to this one. Of all the episodes, I remember this one not being that great. After watching it and getting our review out of the way, I will never watch this one again. I will never watch Space again. And if somebody needs me to go on to a show somewhere and talk about it, I will go back and listen to our review so that I know what I think about it from start to finish, because I do not ever want to see this episode again. Harsh words, Brian, but I think they're appropriate in this case. Mm. <laughs> um, OK, my, my worst episode of the season, the one that really niggled at me, was episode two, Deep Throat. Wow. Your yeah. worst. Yes. Your worst. Yes. My worst Are episode. You kidding me you are <laughs> absolutely not you are putting deep throat yes a, 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 an episode that you rated higher than conduit yep let, yep. let, let, let me let throat. me just bring this up right you gave deep throat a 2.5 right mm -hmm. you gave conduit a 2 you gave right. space right you gave space a 1.5, right? <laughs> yep. So you're telling me that Deep Throat, an episode you gave 2.5, is worse than Space, an episode you gave 1.5? Yes. I sure am, Brian. I and have tell you no words. Well, I've got some words, so I'm going to try and use them as best I can. I feel that this is an episode about absolutely nothing. I nothing happened. Disagree, but there you go. Disagree. Does he not have his, his mind wiped at the end of it? He does. There's no character. There's no character development. He doesn't learn anything whatsoever. There's no uh, relationship building between Scully and Mulder. Deep Throat is the most interesting part of this episode, but it doesn't save it from being completely an episode about nothing. Now, this is an episode that's supposed to lead into the larger storyline. Um, and I don't think it does. I think it's an episode that can be completely excised from that larger story arc throughout the, the, the full series. And it would make not a jot of difference. Because it is 100% an episode about nothing. At the end of it, Mulder is not more aware of anything than he was at the start. He's not growing. In fact, the relationship between the two main characters has deteriorated throughout this episode. And Mulder, Mulder, is, Mulder is aware that he's seen something. Mulder's aware that he's, he's, he's been through something. And given that Scully can... 
Scully. I mean, like, it's not. It's not like he's had his memory all the way back to childhood wiped. It's just the stuff on that base. So what it does is it serves to drive Mulder on even further. It does. It doesn't matter that he can't remember that he saw the UFO. What matters is that actually. He, in a way, having his memory wipe has, corroborates all the things he believes in, which is that you get too close to the truth <sighs> and, they'll, and they'll they'll take you down for it. But beyond that, you know, it does build a relationship between... or introduce this relationship between Mulder and Deep Throat. Uh, but I, I think there's plenty of other stuff in the episode, which we talked about in our review. I'm, I'm forgetting some of it now, but... These... When I sat back and, and I looked through all the summaries of the episodes. These are the five that gave me a, a knee-jerk reaction, just reading them straight away. There was no other ones that even came close to like pushing them off the bottom five. These were the five episodes that I just genuinely did not like. I did not enjoy. Wow. And that's that's it. That is it, Brian. So we, only have a, we had an overlap of two there. We had Conduit and Jersey Devil on each mm. of our... And space. And good. space. Oh, and space as well. Yeah, and space great. as well. Yep, sorry, yep. forgot about that. How could I forget about space? Mm. Uh, did, did, was, ge- was, was Gender Bender not in yours? Oh, no, you had nope. Miracle Man, nope. didn't you? So, yeah. Nope. Um, so you, um, you, right, didn't, okay. you didn't have Gender Bender? Nope. So you have Deep Throat, <laughs> and you don't have Gender Bender. Are you kidding me with this? Serious? My That's goodness. a sound bite just waiting to be stripped from this podcast oh. there, Brian. You have deep throat, but you don't have gender bender. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> oh, good oh. grief, man alive! So, you've you've been doing a lot of work on Facebook, mm. finding out what people's best episodes and things that are where, what their bottom ones were. I think I don't, I'm not too sure. So, do you want to give us some of the the, the, the information that you have? Yeah. So you know, it's some some lovely people on a couple of Facebook sites. There's a Two, two fan sites that I've, I've been kind of hanging out on a little bit recently. One is simply called The X-Files, so look, look for that on Facebook. And the other one is called The X-Files Fans. So we'll, we'll go with uh, The X-Files Fans first because I've, I've got that up on my computer here. Uh, yeah, so I put the questionnaire. I just asked what's everyone's favourite and least favourite season one episode. Um, and some of the answers I got were as follows. Sarah Ann Patrick says, My favourite is Squeeze and least favourite is Fire. I love the whole... Oh, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with Sarah there. <laughs> yeah, Fire's rotten. That should have been on my list, actually. <laughs> no, I disagree. So you didn't think this through, did you, really? Uh, she says, I love the whole Tombs character. The idea and way it was done is so creepy and had maximum maximum effect of an X-File for me. Um, to be honest, the reason I don't like fire is because I have pyrophobia, so I struggle to watch oh. this episode. The rest of Series 1 is great. So, see, so she, she didn't dislike it because it was bad. She disliked it because it, it tapped into her phobia. So, if yeah. anything, that just proves how effective it is. Uh, Charlene Davtovich. I'm sorry, Charlene, if I'm butchering your name there. She says, my first... My favourite episode is Beyond the Sea, and least favourite is Space. Well, Charlene, <laughs> I could not agree more. Um, so, yeah, that, that really taps into my way of thinking. Uh, oh, so I, I apologise in advance for this, because I am seriously going to butcher this name. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll just do your first name and your last name. I, I, I'm sorry I can't pronounce that middle name. Uh, I'm just terrible at, at, at those things. But uh, Riano Nino says, My favourite episode is The Pilot. Simple, because it's introduced us to Mulder and Scully and the greatest TV show ever. Least favourite <laughs> is Space. The whole Martian <laughs> ghost thing was silly. Uh, <laughs> I'm spotting a, a reoccurring thread yeah, here. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Sebastian Vendel Martinez says that his favourite, if we can count Squeeze and Tombs as a two parter, then that. If not, then Beyond the Sea. Least favourite, space. <laughs> Ugh, so dull. <laughs> 
Um, Michael Lee says, favourite Darkness Falls. Always loved this episode. Has everything I like about X-Files. Claustrophobic, remote location, very unknown advisory. Uh, least favourite is Ghost in the Machine. Find this one a little clunky. Technology wasn't really advanced enough back then to pull this off convincingly. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's an interesting choice for the, the top pick, Darkness Falls. That's one mm. I, I really quite liked and you had a little bit of a, a, an issue with. But I think I think the X-Files fans fall into sort of two camps. Those that sort of gravitate towards the sort of alien stuff and the other mm. ones who gravitate towards the kind of monster of the week. And uh, you, you're definitely more just sort of alien person I'd, I'd say more I'm more of the monster of the week kind of guy yeah I, I mean um, like I mean if you look at my favorite episodes of each season you, you're probably going to find it's a monster of the week one um I, yeah. I, I'm more I, I find that Mulder and Scully are at their best together during the conspiracy stuff but if you if you get a monster of the week episode right that, then that's when the show really really does take off um but uh I mean yeah I mean I, I did actually question Michael Lee after his comment about Darkness Falls because I asked him, like, you'd rate Darkness Falls over ice? Uh, and he just said, it's a personal fave. I, I'm more surprised I favour it over Beyond the Sea. Um, and and I, so my reaction to that was, wow, I wasn't so favourable of it. Personally, it kind of felt like a retread of ice, only not as good. Not a bad episode by any means. Still, it's all subjective, isn't it? And that's the thing here that we've got to remember, isn't it? You know, like we, yeah. we're not here to diss anybody's choices. You like what you like, and it does surprise me sometimes. And it, it, it does surprise me that someone would pick Darkness Falls over Ice because, to me, mm. when we were watching it, particularly the first ten minutes of that episode, it, it did feel very familiar. Uh, to, to, to ice, which I well, we we both gave that episode a five star rating. Uh, we we really like that one. Um, you're right; it's a hundred percent subjective. Yeah, you know, if somebody likes something or dislikes something, we shouldn't jump on them. If somebody says that they dislike Deep Throat, you shouldn't jump on them and uh, start berating them. No, 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 absolutely not. Um, but but yeah, uh, so yeah, we've got some more uh, Saxon MJ. This is tough. Season one is really a breakout season, full of fantastic episodes. But as a kid, my favourite episode of season one, other than the pilot, was Darkness Falls. And wow. Yeah. And Ice as an adult, uh, other than the pilot. Beyond the Sea and Tombs. He's, so he's, gone, he's gone for Tombs there, the, the second, uh, the second yeah. Eugene... Victor Toomes episode. We we both kind of went we squeezed, didn't we, out of those two. Yeah, oh definitely. Yeah, that I, I I think easily. Um I should also add that I love Deep Throat. They did government conspiracy, don't trust the military. <laughs> pull it together, man, pull it together. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> They did government conspiracy, don't trust the military, so well in this one. Least favourite as a kid was space and fire as an adult. <laughs> space, fire and Lazarus. Uh, so, he, yeah, he doesn't like Lazarus either. Um, Sarah Southworth says, least favourite episode is definitely space. <laughs> <laughs> Deathly boring, dull characters, a silly B-movie plot, bad special effects, and a Mulder that makes me cringe. Best is Deep Throat. It's a perfect little episode with a great conspiracy plot, good side characters and dialogue, and the music is fantastic. <sighs> there you go. Uh... Carol Mincy says pilot is fave. Donna Harrington says worst is space, best is pilot. <laughs> Carol Mincy, who had previously just commented saying the pilot was her fave, came back and said, oh yeah, space is the worst, shouldn't have been written. <laughs> OK, so that is, uh, that is everything from the good people of the X-Files fans Facebook page. Uh, like I say, I also put that question out on the Facebook page, which was which is simply just called um, the X Files. I did actually notice that a uh, some people who'd commented on the X Files fans page also commented on this one, giving giving me a repeat of their answers. So I will I will try not to uh, repeat uh, s s s some people, um, but 
Here we go. Yeah, so good response here from from this page. Uh, like I say, if you're an X-Files fan, do check out these pages. If you want to speak with some real X-Files fanatics, the, these pages are, are really good for, for doing that. Um, the X-Files fans and the X-Files. So on the X-Files, we've got Jen Charbonnet. I apologise once again if I'm butchering that name. My favourite episode of season one is Ice. It's like a mini movie and the type of X-Files movie I'd like to see. My least favourite is Space. It's just plain boring. <laughs> no matter how many chances it gives me to show me the artistic vision behind it, it just doesn't happen. Uh, Nikki Draz Mirage. Best episode, Ice and Beyond the Sea. Least favourite, Gender Bender. Uh, Billy Gustafson. Favourite, Beyond the Sea. Why? Brad Dourif. He owns that episode. Least favourite, Gender Bender. Uh, Adam Carlo says, My top three from season one. Earl and Maya Flask. Deep Throat. And beyond the sea. My bottom three, Space, Young at Heart, and Jersey Devil. <laughs> uh, Chip Snyder, Ice is my favourite. The episode was creepy and full of paranoia, and it helped cement Mulder and Scully's trust in each other. The supporting cast, featuring Xander Berkeley and Felicity Huffman, was also excellent. Couldn't agree with you more there, Chip. My least favourite is Space. It wasn't particularly interesting or memorable. Uh, Norman Murrow says, Deep Throat is my favourite, with Ice as a close second. Space is the one I watch least. It could have been really good, so I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity. Uh, Juanita Cross says, I vote for Ice. Pres presumably she means for best. I think... This episode cemented their friendship and trust. Least favourite? Do you want to have a guess what a least favourite is? Uh, is it Space? That's right! Adam <laughs> Carlo says, No doubt that Ice was heavily inspired by The Thing, but it was still a very good episode. Uh, Greg Epstein says, Beyond the Sea is my favourite season one episode. It was the episode that made me want to watch the series. My least favourite episode is Jersey Devil. It is poorly written, the forest scenes look as though they were shot in someone's yard, and my living room looks more like Atlantic City than the locations they use. Um, yeah, the, the skid row. <laughs> um, oh, blimey. Uh, I, I, again, apologise. I'm, I'm going to butcher this name. I know it. Uh, Azucena Sicarios. Sicarios. I'm sorry, so sorry. But she says, my favourite is the pilot, I think, for obvious reasons. But if I have to choose other one, it'd be Ice. Because, well, so early in their partnership and they already had to trust each other more than themselves. Yeah, that, she makes a great point there, actually, because... In that episode, due to all the paranoia that's going on, they literally have to trust the other person. Mulder has to trust Scully to, 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 to do the best for him, and Scully has to trust Mulder, likewise, to do the best for her. Uh, so, yeah, very keen observation there. Um, my least favourite episode is Space. So boring and silly and... Ugh. Jay Riz says, my favourite episode from season one is... J what? Oh, sorry, I... Ooh, misread there. Sorry, Jay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My least favourite episode from season one is Jersey Devil. There is so much <laughs> lore surrounding the Jersey Devil, the new Jersey Devil, he's, he's, as he calls it, um, that wasn't touched, and which is completely incompatible with the given Neanderthal conclusion. Uh, the episode and subject matter could have, could have and should have been done so much better than it was. My favourite episode from season one is much harder to pick, but I would have to go with Shadows. Ah. I loved the inclusion... Mm. Oh, this, he meant shapes, sorry. I, I did correct him on this, actually. He, he did mean shapes, because he said... I, yeah, I loved the inclusion of Native American mythos in the episode, and I also loved the treatment of the werewolf topic. 
uh, yeah, it, it was a good episode, but it wasn't one of my favourites. But like like we said, it, it is subjective, so we, we we're not we're not ragging on your choice there, mate. So uh, I think there's a few more comments have just popped up. Let me have a look. Um, right, cat. Uh, where are we? Ha Halla Zabana. Sorry. <laughs> Squeeze is my fave because the actor played his part so well as a fellow creepy X-Files monster. I'm not really big on season one, but I do also love the pilot. Got me hooked. Uh, Darren Morehouse. Uh, he, now, he actually said host. Uh, he said host. I can't stand it. But this is it's actually a season two episode. Uh, so, yeah. So, sorry about that, Darren. Uh Come back next time. Um, Cheryl L. Persichetti? 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 Sorry, Cheryl. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm terrible. I really am. Um, mm -hmm. Favourite episode is season one. F sorry. Favourite episode in season one for me is Ice. And my least favourite episode of season one is Gender Bender. Adina Hirsch. Ice is my favourite. Not sure on the least. And finally... Tracy Altizer, don't really have any favourites in season one, but if I had to pick, I'd say the Earl and Meyer flask, because I was so sad to see Deep Throat go. Jersey Devil is a least favourite. And there you go. That's, that's what the people on Facebook had to say about season one of The X-Files. OK, so now it's time for us to have our say on our top five, Brian. Mm. So you went first last time. I'll, I'll go first this time. Yeah. Um, with my number five choice. Now, I had a little bit more trouble trying to pick a top five than I did a bottom five. And unfortunately, I had it down to seven episodes. Right. And two had to be jettisoned, which I felt for them because I really did uh, like all seven of these, pretty much. But... At number five on my list is the pilot. Mm, okay. I think it's a, it's a terrific episode. <clears throat> it really just nails everything. And it's so very rare that you find a pilot episode of any show that hits the ground running. Usually there's things that need to be tweaked, touched up. This is absolutely perfect. It has a good mystery. It has a terrific partnership with Mulder and Scully. It has some nice moments with the two of them, especially when they're, say, in the whole, uh, the motel room and Mulder's talking about his sister. They're sharing stories together. Mm. It creates that partnership very early in the whole look of the series, and that's why it's my number five. See, I'm really surprised, because I'm going to call you out on, on it again. It's, it's, it's quite lethal, me having all our scores up here. You get your... Your top five should actually be very easy to make because in season one you gave five episodes five out of five. And one of those episodes wasn't the pilot. Um, yep. So, again, you're saying that the pilot episode is better... You know, the pilot episode, which you gave 4.5 out of five, is better than one of those episodes that you gave a five. See, what you need to do is, is, is initially after watching the episode, it's, it's much like movies throughout the year. You, you see a movie and, and, and throughout the year, it, it grows on you. It becomes better to you. And when you do your year-end list, even though there may be movies that had higher scores, when you look back at, the whole, at it, you go, you know what? That one stuck with me a little bit more. It's grew on me. I like some okay. of the aspects of it. Okay. So, even though the, the scores may be different, there may be ones on here, Brian, that I didn't get a five at all. There may be ones on here that um, got low scores mm. that, that have meant more to me since then. Yeah. Well, t t to be honest, that actually makes more sense now because you've got to you've got to bear in mind where I'm coming from as a as a proper diehard X Files fan. I've seen these episodes countless times. Like e even even before we got into doing this, I could have told you what my well, my top episodes were of the season um, because because I've, I've had chance to dissect them so often that my opinions are now pretty cemented. And I think the only one that really changed 
during our our reviews w- was Tombs, was that second Eugene Tombs episode. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, so on the whole, the ones that I, I've always loved, I, I, I still do. Whereas you, you coming to this fairly fresh, fairly newbie, I can understand how your opinion might change, actually. Uh, whereas, yeah, whereas for me, my grades are pretty solid. Um, and and I do I do know which one of those, or which, well I do know which one of those had five marks has been pushed off the list, and it was very so close to being on it. Which which one was it? I'm not telling you just now. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, want, I want to keep you in suspense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. Okay, so my number five for my favourite episodes of season one uh, is pilot. Uh, so yeah, just uh, I I can't think of many first episodes from TV series that are as good as this in in the way that it sets up <clears throat> everything we need to know about these characters, gives them an adventure to go on that is actually quite intriguing, and really makes me want to come back for more, uh, and 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 just right off the bat. Mulder and Scully felt like really well-rounded, deeply researched, fully developed characters. You know, from from the moment we first are introduced to them, they feel like full people. You know, um, they they feel like two characters who you've already followed on a season of television. Um, and yeah, so pr- props to Chris Carter, props to the creative team. Just yeah, get, get right, right off the starting line, coming out with this as an episode. Really great stuff. Um, Terrific. Well, my number four um, is EBE. Mm. Now this was when we had a little bit of difference of opinion when we discussed it. I, I liked it. Because of the whole duality of it, because it, it plays on Mulder's want, need to know the truth, and how uh, Deep Throat manipulates him, and how Scully tries to tell him that what's been happening, and it really does build up the relationship of Mulder and Scully ever so well, and kind of tears down the episode of Deep, uh, the episode, the, the relationship of Deep Throat mm. and, and Mulder and Scully, and creates that air of. Well, why is this guy? This guy was helping them, but now it seems very duplicitous in his nature. I I really liked the way it, it, it went about its, its business. Mm. Um, I mean, I look back again. This, this was an episode where it was it was on, it wasn't on, it was on, and then I was like, you know what? I really did like that one. I really did like it. So that was my number four. Okay. Right. Uh, my number four then is Squeeze, which is you know the the first episode we got with Eugene Victor Toombs. Uh, this this was the first episode that we both gave five out of five, uh, and it was the first Monster of the Week episode. So yeah, you know, really strong stuff. The the character. Of of Tombs is a classic villain. You know, a, a lot of shows now that that kind of were spawned as a result of the X Files. Even something like Smallville, you know, which had a lot of inspiration from the X Files. Those kind of shows, they all at some point end up having a villain that that has that you know the stretch ability, um, and. It kind of waters it down a bit in in many ways, but if, if if you want to find the first, yeah, look no further. You got Eugene Toomes, really great villain, uh, played brilliantly as well by Doug Hutchison. Uh, he does a fa- fantastic job, uh, and just just some great Mulder Scully moments. Uh, we we see uh, a bit of the ribbing that Mulder gets from some of his colleagues when they call him Spooky, and yeah, just seeing how how. Uh, Scully, as as a partner, as a person, as a human being, actually goes to bat for Mulder. Actually comes to his side, over and above uh, her former partner or her form her her friend. Uh, I I can't remember the name of the actor. It really annoys me that I can't remember the name of the actor because he's actually in Gotham and he's 
one of my favourite things about Gotham at the moment. I just love him. He plays plays Detective Bullock. Uh, but yeah, a really good actor. I, I like this guy. I've always liked him ever since I saw him here in Squeeze. But yeah, fantastic episode. Really good stuff. Uh, my number three is Squeeze. <laughs> um, pretty much the reason you were saying. I think it, it really has a, such a strong villain. And I think it's down to the casting as well because Hutchinson is such a small person. Mm. As he see, looks that way on, on screen, he's such a small, unassuming, quiet person. He has that kind of freaky look about him. Yeah. Uh, the special effects, which aren't great, are good enough. Even now they're good enough. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's a praise to uh, fears of the time and of nowadays of home invasions. You know, you're supposed to be safe and secure in your home. Mm. That's your safe place. Yeah. And somebody can always get in. This guy can always get into your home and do you harm. And I think it's such a, a horrifying thought mm. and a terrifying villain. And it truly was a five out of five. It was just excellent. Yeah. Everything about it was terrific. So that was my number three. Absolutely. Uh, okay. <clears throat> my number three is the Earl of Meyer Flask. Really, well, you know, it was the last episode that we reviewed. So... Won't go into it too much because if, if you're listening to this, if you regularly listen to to this podcast, then you'll have probably heard our review last time. Uh, just a really great conspiracy episode gets really gets the ball rolling for for that kind of episode that we're going to see in the future of this show. So, yeah, fantastic. Um, now, I, I'm pretty sure before I go into my number two, I'm pretty sure we're going to be. On the same side with these two, I think. I'm just curious to see what order they're in. Mm, yeah. uh, my number two is Beyond the Sea. I knew it would be. I knew we'd differ on these two. Um, <clears throat> now, after Squeeze, where we had a, a fantastic villain, I thought, this is never going to be better. This, perform- uh, this kind of bad guy. And I, think, uh, I think it's a, a terrific performance by... Brad Dourif. See guys, Brad Dourif. Brad Dourif. Yeah. Who? I think it's sorry. Excuse me. I think it's terrific performances y- by Brad yes, Dourif. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, I, I think he does a terrific job. I, I think it kind of sub circumvents most of the city way the series be going by making Mulder the skeptic mm. and making Scully the one that that believes in it. It's a kind of role reversal. It's, it's a bittersweet ending as well. Um, it ties in this, this really freaky image. of And it's given me, like, hairs in the back of my neck just now, of Scully's father sitting silently in a chair, mm. mouthing something. Yeah. It's just whoa, <clears throat> one of those kind of images. Um, terrific, terrific uh, episode. I'm so close to being my, my number one. Um, and I think it's all down to Brad Dourif's uh, portrayal. Of that, of that character, which is absolutely outstanding and jaw dropping for a TV show yeah. to have a performance of that kind of quality. Um, terrific episode. Mm. And uh, w- when we uh, when we talked about Roland, we talked yeah. we talked about how when an actor is on their A game, it, it can lift the, the actor who's playing off them. In the case of Roland, it didn't. But um, <laughs> and uh, you know, in Beyond the Sea, Scully, Gillian Anderson as well. Man, she was on another level because she was she was going up against Brad Dourif, who was at his best, and it brought her up to her best. And the two of them in those scenes together, going at each other, was just phenomenal. Uh, but yeah, that, I mean, my number two anyway is. Ice. Uh, so, yeah, just wow. You know, I I'd never seen the thing before right. before I saw Ice, and I I knew that's what it was. I knew that Ice was a was essentially a an X Files version of the thing. But wow, so well done, so brilliantly tense. The tension in the episode throughout is staggering you forget you're watching a tv show you think you're watching a movie it feels like you are literally watching a movie um so good they make such great use of that 
very confined location. And as as uh, you know, one of the people who commented on those Facebook groups uh, th- that I read out before, get getting in some really great actors to fill out those supporting roles. Xander Berkeley, Felicity Hoffman, really elevates the material as well. Uh, yeah, it, I mean it's it's so close to being my number one, but the, the episode that is my number one, which clearly you've all figured out by now, is it's, it's just. <laughs> It might actually be my favourite X Files episode of all time. Never just, never mind just the first season. So, yeah. Um, well, my number one is quite clearly Ice. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's terrific. Um, I'm a, a huge fan of John Carpenter's The Thing, mm-hmm. and I think I mean it does have some things on par with it. It's a parasitic element. There is the confined space. There is nothing but death outside the door of freezing temperatures. And you're locked in a building with yeah, a, a person who could be the bad guy. Um, and like you said, all, all the things you said about the performances, the actors, the, the location, it's all terrific. It has a very strong genre feel about it, that kind of horror-centric feel, which is something that I gravitate towards. Uh, so it covers all the bases as well by bringing in that perfect opening scene where you've got the what the hell's going on here are the two guys just fighting it out and then holding the guns to their own heads and then you have the moment where Mulder and Scully have a a tete a tete, they go to each other a proper fight and you're like mum and dad are fighting here I I don't know who who, who to side with what's going on, the distrust it's very claustrophobic it's very um, atmospheric it's exciting, it's mysterious, and it is bloody good television. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, as as uh, as if you couldn't tell, my number one is Beyond the Sea. Um, I, 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 at the risk of just repeating what you said, Brad Dourif, man alive. Do you, like... I like Brad Dourif anyway as an actor, but I think I said in, when we did our review of the episode, I, I, even in his film work, I don't think he's given a performance as good as what he gave in this episode. It's absolutely staggering. Because like you, like you said, it's not a performance, it's performances. The way he switches from these different characters that are coming through his body, he he, he does it so believably well. Really brilliantly done. Um, and just... I, I think one one thing that me and you can agree on throughout this season is that when episodes have been Scully centric rather than Mulder centric, they yeah. they tend to be better. I don't know why that is, but for whatever reason, it's just been the case. Um, but but yeah, th- this is a really excellent Scully centric episode, and it gives Gillian Anderson an absolute. Stunning chance to shine, um, you know. Just some 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 scenes where she's just allowed to to just be let off the leash. Really, really great performance from her as well. Uh, I, I just think it's brilliantly written. You know, it's it kind of t- it has a bit of that Silence of the Lambs vibe about it. You know, the the female FBI agent having to go into an incarcerated psychopath to, in order to get help tracking down another psychopath um, you know it's funny that the two episodes that we've both put at our, our number two spots kind of ape two classic movies Yeah. Um, I, I, I think they just do it so well to be able to take take an idea that's been done in a film, condense it down to television because you're, because you're putting it in a, in a 40 minute time slot rather than an expanded two hour time slot it forces them to be very economical with it very uh very taut with it and it, it yeah it just brilliant brilliant filmmaking not just tv but just brilliant filmmaking from both these both these episodes it's just for me just from the writing writing side of things performances side of things uh the drama of it all beyond the sea just just pips it I mean, we're arguing semantics here. Yeah. I'd say <laughs> they're both excellent, mm. excellent uh, episodes. 
So, um, would you like to know the one episode that I can remember from season two? Or the one image that I have from an episode in season two? I don't know what episode it will be, but I'll tell you what I have. Go on. I have, uh, I think it's a water treatment plant. It's the host, and... yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. This is the one episode that I can faintly remember. It's kind of like a, a sort of leech person. Yes, yes. Yes. Is this another Jersey Devil scenario, Brian? No. I I, I think um, this does tend to be a bit of a fan favourite. Um, for, for, right. for me personally, I always found it a little bit too... Scuzzy. It it's it, it, right. yeah, just it, very dank. Very, I mean, who wants to spend time in a sewer? You know what I mean. And this epi- that episode spends a lot of time in a sewer. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's a tough one to call. I gotta say, very tough one to call. Um, but 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 I but I will say it is a fan favorite. Uh, now. We, we've we've reviewed all these episodes, all these season one episodes, uh, despite the fact that you know some of your scores may have changed since viewing. Uh, uh-huh. We're, we're going to go off the scores that we that we gave while we reviewed uh, and come up with an average for for my average and your average for the season as a whole. So out of five. What we each gave season one. Um, so when I when I took all of your scores for the twenty four episodes, added them up and divided them by twenty four, obviously to come up with an average, you gave the X Files season one two point nine out of five. Okay. So when I did th- did the same thing for me, worked out my average. I gave season one three point one out of five. What do you think about those scores? At, at first, when you say that at two point nine, it feels a little bit low. Mm. But then you have to remember space <laughs> <laughs> and the Jersey Devil yeah. and, and the other episodes yeah, and things like yeah. that. And it's yeah. I mean, I don't think two point nine is a bad score. No, no. I don't. No. I don't. I don't. For a 24 episode season, <clears throat> um, th- that's pretty darn good. It's, it's practically a three. And, and yes. A, a three star rating, you, you're basically saying that something is good. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm surprised myself, like I said, that I. I a 3.1 from me, you know, a, an X Files diehard, an X Files fanatic, a 3.1, that. that <laughs> That's like me just saying, yeah, it was good. Um, and and to be honest, if, if I'm being honest, if I look back at some of these episodes, actually, that 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 is about all I can say about season one. It's just that you know those handful of episodes that were the five out of fives, they're they're like on another level. They're just yes. It's it's like you pointed out before. You get you get an episode like that, and then we get some dirge that comes after. But it's just it's it's, it's those it's those handful of five star episodes, the promise of what this show can really be, that makes you want to keep coming back. Absolutely, terrific. So there we go. We've just closed out season one. So next time when you come back, we're going to be starting on season two. It's a whole new venture. It begins all over again. I am really excited to get stuck into it after episode 24, the Erlenmeyer flask. I have no preconceptions. I don't know where it's going to go. I know that a second season of TV can sometimes be a little bit of a back step, so mm. we'll see what happens. Um, what's your rough overall riding say, opinion or idea of season two, Brian? I feel like by the, uh, by the time we get to do this episode for season two, you know, the wrap up show, mm-hmm. I've I've, yep. I've got a pretty good feeling that our end of season overall average scores are going to be higher. Good. So Good. That, that's that, that's promising. Mm, yeah, uh, I, and I think the uh, the government conspiracy story arc is going to pl- is is going to be a large part of that is going to be it's going to be a big reason for that uh, to be honest 
So I'd just like to take a small moment and thank everybody that's listened to the show from, from Brian and myself. Uh, we really appreciate the fact that you've listened to us kind of battle it out and, and work our way through <coughs> season one. I think it's something that we've both really enjoyed and I know we're, we're really looking forward to getting into season two as well, which will be starting very soon. Mm-hmm. So thanks for listening and we'll see you in season two of the X-Files Revisited. <laughs>